QuickBooks Online 2024. Adjust opening balances. Get ready because we're moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online Sample Company 5. We set up in a prior presentation, continuing to lay down those foundational items necessary to do the normal accounting process. The normal accounting process typically including the entering of financial transactions with the help and use of forms found in the plus or new button broken out by cycle customer or sales cycle, vendor or expense cycle, employee or payroll cycle. We communicate with these individuals, customers, vendors, and employees with the help of the centers on the left, the sales center or customer center, expenses center or vendor center, and the payroll or employee center. The foundational items, which are the one-stop things, the things we do and then don't repeat on a periodic basis as we do with the forms, data input, and communication with the customers are generally found under the cog where we looked at the your company items as well as the lists we're basically still continuing on with the list here which can also be found under the transactions the chart of accounts we've been adding account balances to our chart of accounts imagining that we had a prior accounting system which we want to end using as of the end of the prior period we're imagining to be 12 31 2023 these are our ending balances and we're putting them into our beginning balances so that we can start the new system as of January 1st, 2024. We couldn't simply put one big journal entry in there, although we were tempted to do so because each of these accounts might have special needs, sub accounts, for example, the inventory, if using a perpetual inventory system. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our cpa six pack shirts a must-have for any pool or beach time mixing money with muscle always sure to attract attention yeah even if you're not a cpa you need this shirt so you can like pull in that iconic cpa six pack stomach muscle vibe man you know that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Would also need the items of inventory, the accounts receivable needing the sub ledger, for the customers, the accounts payable, needing a sub ledger for the vendors, and so on and so forth. So what we did instead is we took these one at a time, made this balance correct, and then the question is, well, what does the other side do? Because it's a double entry accounting system. You can't just put 25,000 in cash without also impacting some other account. That's how the double entry accounting system works. Well, the other side went to in some way, shape or form, the equity section so if we can get this number correct one at a time instead of in one big journal entry then the other side of each of those transactions got dumped into the equity section in some way shape or form what are those ways shapes and forms that it might have been dumped into the equity section in well it could have for example with the accounts receivable created an invoice and the other side got dumped into the income statement in the form of income. But because we entered it as of the prior year, the income will roll out as of the end of December 31st, 2023 to the equity section in an account that might be called retained earnings. Some of the other accounts, if we put money into the checking account, QuickBooks just dumped it into some thing that they made up 
called like beginning balance equity or opening balance equity or something like that. That's fine too. So it's still in equity, but it's just in some random account we want to clean out now. Or we saw that the accounts payable, for example, made a bill also went to the income statement in the form of an expense, but it's going to roll into the equity section as well. So let's check that out. So now we're just going to clean up the equity section in essence. So if I go down to, let's open up our reports, left-hand side in the reports. I'm going to open up our favorites, right-clicking on the balance sheet, open that in a new tab. I'm going to open up the profit and loss, right-click on that, open it in a new tab, otherwise known as the income statement. And I made the favorite trial balance over here so I can open it easily in my favorites, right-click, open the trial balance. If you don't have it there, you can type in trial balance up top to find it. Let's go to the tab to the right, close up the hand boogie. Let's bring it back to 2023 because that's when we entered the information as of. So 010123 tab, 123 tab, running it to refresh it, going to the tab to the right, same process, closing the hand boogie. That change is change. 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it so we can refresh it again. Then we'll tab to the right another time. Closing the hamburger, we have the trial balance, balance sheet on top of the income statement, nice, nice clean, easy report to read. 010123 tab, 123123 tab, running it to refreshing it. So quick recap, we go, we go to the balance sheet, for example. What has happened? We entered all of our beginning balances. If we, if we just review this quickly, we entered the cash balance. If I go into it, then the system basically put in a deposit form or we actually entered it into the register. So there's the deposit form. The other side you can see went to opening balance equity. So it just made up this account and put it to that other side. If I go back, we recall that the accounts receivable, how did this happen? If we go into the AR, we'll recall that we created invoices. How did we do that? Well, we actually just put in our customers that owed us money and we put the beginning balance per customer and QuickBooks made invoices. The other side of the invoice is gonna to go to services, which is an income account. So it dumped it to the income statement. That's okay, because the income statement's gonna close out to equity. And then we went to the inventory. The inventory, if I look at that, how did we do that? Well, we just basically listed the inventory, the guitars in our case, that's what we sell over here when we input the data and QuickBooks made a journal entry using the inventory starting value uh, form and just dumped the other side into once again, opening balance equity. Let's go back. So then we did the, the accumulated depreciation and the furniture and fixture. We just made up those accounts and dumped the other side using a journal entry this time because that's the default form when there is no other form. And the other side just went into the, uh, it doesn't show the other side, but it went into the beginning balance equity again, or opening balance equity. Closing that out, that same thing happened for the furniture equipment and the depreciation accounts payable. What happened there? We just entered the vendors that we owe money to. QuickBooks entered a bill when we put the balance of the money that we owed them and they dumped the other side into the other miscellaneous expense because it's a bill and this expense is typically the other side of a bill form closing that out let's exit and then we have the visa the other side of that went to opening balance equity we've got the loan the other side of that went to opening balance equity so you can see all of these accounts that we entered the other side washed out into opening balance equity in some way shape or form now those two items that went into income are making up this 5,500. We could see those on the income statement, giving us the detail about that form. Here's the income statement. There's the services that's created from the invoices that we built when we put in the beginning balances for the accounts receivable. And then we have the miscellaneous expenses, which are the result of the bill created when we put the beginning balance in for accounts payable. So we don't really want things to happen to the income statement, but the fact that it's in the prior period means it doesn't really matter because that 5,500 will zero out when we refresh in 2024. So if I look at my balance sheet, it looks like our plan had worked. If we look at the total equity, 
it adds up to 77,896. Over here, 77,896. So that would be that you can use the same method no matter what type of entity you have, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation. And then once everything is in equity in some way, shape or form, we make the adjustments to coincide with the type of entity that we are in, which we will do now. We're looking at a sole proprietorship now. So in a sole proprietorship, I should really only have, uh, well, at this point, one equity account that's just going to be the owner's equity account. Now, I could have other equity accounts that would also be tracking things like draws and uh, possibly investments from the owner. But usually those things uh, in a, a normal accounting like textbook world, they close out to the one equity section. So that's so we should just have one account tracking all of the equity because we only have one owner. If it was a partnership, that's usually the most difficult system because you could do the same starting point, get down to equity, equity representing what is owed to the owner if they were thought of as one owner, even though it's a partnership. And then you have to break out the number of equity accounts, which we might call capital accounts per partner, which there could be many partners, right? If you have like 10 partners, then that becomes quite a, a tedious task. Even with two partners, it's not the easiest thing uh, to do. And then each of those capital accounts might have different revenue sharing uh, according to the partnership agreement. And you could have then to track draws and investments per partner. So all you, so the same process though, we would take this number and just break it out to the partners. And then if it were a corporation, it's actually easier than a partnership usually, because although you have multiple owners, we've broken them out into equal chunks, kind of like having dollars to exchange as opposed to people bartering with cows and eggs and stuff or something like that, right? Because now you have equal units and we on the bookkeeping side don't have to track what the value is per owner, but rather just what the total value is and then the fact that we have equal units being distributed, whoever owns more shares then has a, obviously a bigger ownership. Therefore, we would break the, the equity out into the retained earnings because that's the name of the account that's usually used for a corporation. And then if there was corporate investments, instead of investments, we call those the capital or, or the, the common shares typically. And then the draws are dividends in the, in the corporation terminology. In essence, they, you know, there's some differences in how, you know, the regulations on how who gets a dividend and so on. But that's the general idea. So, so note that this net income, the, the fact that QuickBooks puts this in here kind of causes a problem if we're like a partnership, for example, because you might want to distribute that net income with a journal entry to the partner capital accounts. And this isn't an account. So it's not like I can decrease, decrease this account and apply it to the capital accounts. So that's just something that you kind of have to deal with uh, with QuickBooks that it, that it does that because let me just show you what happens if I go into the next day up, as we saw in a prior presentation, if I go to 010124 to 1231, what happened? K Paso 010124 123124 and run it. Now that net income has gone to zero and it's in retained earnings. If I go to the to the profit and loss, that 5,500, it's going to reset to zero. 010124 123124. Boom. It resets. There's nothing in it. And then if I go to my my trial balance, you can see what we have here is all of the balance sheet accounts and then all of the liability accounts. And then down here you've got the the equity accounts, no retained earnings because there's no accumulation of revenue thus far the way we have it. And then we just have these two accounts down below, which represent the net income. That's why we're still in balance. If I go one day up here, 01012412312124, then it's going to roll that net income, the two income and expense accounts, into the 5,500 retained earnings. Okay, so that's great. Now, the only thing is, if I go back to the balance sheet here, I'd like to, I want to get rid of the opening balance equity account. And I'm just going to put it all into the retained earnings account because I'm a sole proprietorship and the opening balance is kind of an ugly account. You don't really want to have 
an opening balance equity account because it doesn't look professional. It's just an account that is used by QuickBooks to automatically put stuff to generally when you start the business so that you know that QuickBooks forced that to happen instead of dumping it into to the retained earnings. Easiest way to do that, you could do that with a journal entry, but it's probably easy to use the register to do that. So let's go and find that. If I go to the tab to the left and I go down to the uh, transactions tab, chart of accounts, all balance sheet accounts have a register, kind of like the checking account is probably what you most imagine a register for. Income statement accounts do not because they're temporary accounts. So if I find that equity account, let's choose, I could use either one, by the way, I could go into the opening balance equity register, or I could go to the other balance sheet account of retained earnings. Why would I choose one versus the other? Well, in this case, the opening balance equity account uh, is going to have the number that I want to go down to zero. So that's probably the easiest place to go. So if I go into opening balance equity, use the register, I can see what's in there and I can see that I need it to be zero. So I can, I can easily see my journal entry. That's why I'm choosing it. If I select the drop down, I want a journal entry transaction. And I'm going to say this is as of 12-31-23, the same dates that we've been using for all of our adjustments, beginning balance adjustment. I'll just abbreviate. And so it has this in it right now. So I'm going to decrease it by that amount. 723396. Is that right? 72396. I didn't dyslexify it. And then we're going to put the other side into retained earnings. Now, QuickBooks might give us a warning because you don't usually post to retained earnings. So, but we're going to say that's okay because these are the beginning balance adjustment. It didn't give us a warning. All right. So QuickBooks is okay with that. Back down to zero. That's what we want. Let's check it out. Let's go back to my register this way. Let's go to the balance sheet, scrolling up, run it. So now we had all this stuff that went into opening balance equity. If I go into opening balance equity and I'm going to go back a year to 2023 so I could see the detail. So all this stuff went into it and then we just took it right back out with this journal entry. So we took it out and then we put it into retained earnings. And let's go back and uh, what, what are you talking about? Just exit QuickBooks. Now it's in retained earnings, that's fine, except that I'd like to use the name uh, owner's equity. So I'll use this. I'm not sure if there should be like an, I always, whether, where the apostrophe should go and whatnot. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to call it owner's equity, or you could call it a capital account, but owner's equity for a sole proprietor. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to change the name. Now you can't, this is a special account. You can't delete it because this is the account. You'll note that this is the one balance sheet account that doesn't have a register. That's because this account is the account that uh, QuickBooks is using as its closing account, meaning the income statement is automatically rolling into this account on a yearly basis, not on a monthly basis. It doesn't do it on a monthly basis automatically because it breaks it out into net income. It's its own thing. It rolls it in here on a yearly basis. Okay, so I can change the name though. So I can edit it and I want to change the name. And that's also important if you have a partnership or something like that, and you're trying to make multiple capital accounts, note it's still gonna roll into one of the accounts. You might make this still call it like retained earnings and then allocate it out of retained earnings into your capital accounts. The retained earnings is where the, the income statement will close out into, all right? Okay, so let's call it, let's just call it, uh, what are I, owner's equity. I think there should be a com, uh, an apostrophe somewhere. I'm just gonna call it that though. So I'm not a spelling, expert hopefully that doesn't bother anyone too much i'm gonna run it and then so now we have it uh called owner's equity down here so there it's owner's equity so there we have it so so obviously you would want to <laughs> spell it correctly and everything uh if you're external reporting that's why we didn't want the opening balance equity because it looks ugly because it just doesn't look like a proper external reporting account right so if you have something in opening balance equity it kind of looks like you didn't really clean it up. It might not be wrong, but it's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouth because they're going to think, ah, maybe they don't know what they're doing, right? So, so it's, I think it's best to move it out of there. And I think it's best if you're a, a partnership to call it a capital account or something other than retained earnings, because if I see retained earnings, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it should be a corporation if I see retained earnings. That's what's an indication 
that it's a co it's a corporation name, right? I mean, so in any case, there we go. So now, now obviously, still, if I go back to the prior period, oh one oh one two three to twelve thirty one two three, then it's still going to be in this net income. Now it's still in the five thousand five hundred is in net income, and then it's rolling out to what was the retained earnings, which is now the opening, which is now the owner's equity. So if I bring it up one, oh one oh one two four twelve thirty one two four, boom, bam. And there it is. So if I go to my trial balance now, I think everything is the way it should be. Let's run it. We're looking at 2024 now. If I go side by side, we do the head to head with the trial the, with the trial balance over here. And uh, I've got boxing terms in my head. I've been watching the, the old YouTube things on the real deal holy field for some reason the the youtube things have been showing me that it's been anyway so we got the we got the checking account we got the accounts receivable we got the inventory we've got the accumulated depreciation we've got furniture and equipment and the accounts payable and then the visa the loan payable and then the 77, nine, 77 896 in the the owner's equity looks, looks very looks perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. So I think we're ready to roll into the next year. But we still need to look at one more foundational item, setting up the payroll, which isn't our main focus payroll here. We have a whole other course or section on that, but that's another thing that you'd need to set up as like a foundational item before you get into your normal cycles here if you're processing payroll of course within your uh, quickbooks system you could process it outside you might have a third-party vendor you might not have any payroll but we'll look at that next time